Russians made a tough decision in Avdiivka, as their the most powerful offensive is failing. And just to name a few, Russians are withdrawing their aviation. Up to 85 armored vehicles are destroyed in the last two days alone. And Ukrainians look like initiate the second stage of Kherson region liberation. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. <laughs> so, today we have this Russian guy in the Russian subway who is obviously wearing a Z hat. But there is a very quite big bamboozlement. As soon as he opened his leather jacket, we were able to see that he actually has an American, the most unfriendliest flag on his t-shirt. My question here is, is he the agent of Kremlin or undercover FBI agent? And moreover, whichever country he prefers to defend, what is he sending on his phone? What kind of extremely confidential information is there? And now is my question to you guys. If you think this is just a regular guy, can you please comment, bro, just leave him alone. But if you think that this is a secret undercover agent of the FBI pretending to be a Russian Z soldier, in this case, all you need to do is to like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will see it from my YouTube statistics, how many of you think like this. You can also follow me on Instagram to see how I live outside of YouTube and the link is down below. But okay, time to get uh, serious. And first of all, we have some major news about Attack MS. Thank you so much guys for correcting me how to pronounce this abbreviation. And then the response of Putin to this. Then we'll go to the south of Ukraine and talk about potentially the second stage of Kherson region liberation and we will finalize everything in the east with this tough decision that Russians had to make around Avdivka. And so yes, first of all, according to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuloba, he is mentioning that America will start permanently sending attack MS missiles to Ukraine. Exactly what we guys were talking about on this channel for the last two days. That this first batch of attack MS missiles was just a trial and most likely in the future there will be more. Even we could not assume that more will mean indefinitely more. Well, let's see. This is what it is at this moment. And the best part about it is that previously Ukraine only received the only one variation of attack MS missile with a range of up to 100 miles or 160 kilometers. But there are attack MS missiles with a much bigger range, potentially around even 300 kilometers or who knows, maybe even more. And guess what? Russians did respond to this news. Because, first of all, you remember uh, several days ago, Ukrainians already obliterated Berdyansk airfield, destroying several Russian helicopters and other military equipment. And only after that, Russians were like, okay, guys, it looks like we have to hide a little bit better. So they will need to withdraw their aviation far behind the current front lines way further than it is right now, which will obviously complicate their logistics, to say the least, a little bit. And besides that, since Russians will not have the aviation or other military vehicles close by, it only means in case there is a fast attack by Ukrainians, Russians will no longer be able to respond fast, because for obvious reasons. Their heavy machinery will be way further away. But there is uh, some way response by Russians. So, according to Putin's personal demand, a rocket missile factory was built literally in between the residential buildings in Moscow in a record-breaking time, only around 8 months. That's right, the entire missile factory. Whenever people tell you Come on, it's not a rocket science, means that the rocket science is pretty complicated and everything related to it. But Russians still were able to build the entire factory in 8 months 
when sometimes it takes years for holes in roads to be covered, for the residential buildings to be repaired. But if it's military related, Putin is showing that Russians are capable of actually doing these things. But okay, now as promised, let me give you an extremely brief update from the south of Ukraine, where Ukrainians look like initiated Kherson liberation stage too, and then we'll go to the east of the country. And first of all, unfortunately, we have to make a stop in a small settlement called Stepove, located in Mykolaiv region, because recently, as a result of once again Russian attack, a residential infrastructure, including agricultural related building, has been severely damaged. And unfortunately, according to the representative of Ukrainian Air Force, Yuri Ignat, Russians recently started to use more ballistic missiles, which are extremely complicated to intercept, especially because Ukrainians do not have the capabilities to do that. The only air defense system which can is Patriot, and Ukraine has a very limited number of them. Majority of them are concentrated around the capital, Kiev. And because of this, in the last 24 hours, Ukrainians were able to intercept three Shahid drones and only four out of 17 missiles that Russians launched. But Ukrainians did have their response as well, such as, for example, according to the Ukrainian soldiers in the south, using artillery, they're able to destroy a Russian artillery firing position in Obrivka, along with Grad multiple launch rocket system. But obviously, the most significant event of the last several days is that Ukrainians were reportedly able to cross Dnipro river and land, even gain the foothold on the left side of Kherson region, which was confirmed by the Institute for the Study of War, and now it is also confirmed, as you can see right here, by this map. And as of right now, according to the general staff of Ukraine, as you can see from this another map, two settlements which are under reportedly control by Ukrainians are Poima and Pishanivka, and Ukrainians they continue to advance to the south. It was not like the raids in the past, where Ukrainians just crossed the river and then went back. This time, they're actually engaging in the combat activities with Russians. And just once again, referring to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, at least two company-sized military units were dispatched to the southern parts of Kherson region, and as you can see, it was still enough to recapture this land. And Russians, according to them, are significantly concerned. <laughs> I mean, every single time their failings to do something to protect themselves against Ukrainians, it is always either significantly concerned, advancing backwards, or victoriously retreating. Same idea, different words. And most importantly, what makes a perfect sense, something also we've been talking about on this channel for the last several weeks, is that the reason why Russians were not able to stop Ukrainians from crossing the Dnipro River, it is because a lot of Russian forces are relocated from the southern parts in Kherson region to defend places like Zaporozhye region or even the east of Ukraine, meaning that there is not that many Russian soldiers left. And besides that, because there was not that many activities in Kherson for the last several months, those remaining Russian infantry is not that much combat ready, they do not have that much battle experience. And so, as of right now, this crossing only happened less than two days ago, and it was only once again approximately two companies. So, we are still waiting for some major breakthroughs and liberations, and I will keep a close eye on the development of this situation. And as always, if you don't want to miss this crucial update, just please consider subscribing to my channel. But for now, let me give you a similar quick update from the east of Ukraine, where Russians had to make a quote-unquote tough decision in Avdiivka. But first of all, let's make a quick stop in Rostov, where recently local air defense system was able to intercept something in its sky, and uh, locals were able to hear some loud noises. Then we once again refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians continued their offensive attempts along Kupiansk Svatovy Kremina front line with no recognized gains so far. But we do have a picture from Ukrainian side, which shows us the consequences of Russian offensive in Kupiansk front line, and as you can see, it did not went 
it did not go quite well. Moving down to Bakhmut, we have a video personally presented to us by the Ukrainian general Alexander Sirsky, which shows the work of a Ukrainian assault helicopter. And if you remember several days ago, besides Berdyansk airfield, another airfield of Russians in Luhansk also was attacked by Ukrainians. And right here we have the new satellite images, which shows the consequences of this attack. At least six attack helicopters of Russians were either severely damaged or destroyed as a result of this. And ultimately speaking about the most active battle zone in the east, the city called Avdiivka, the commander of chief of Ukrainian forces himself, Valery Zaluzhny, arrived to plan the defenses of, uh, of Avdiivka. He obviously did not reveal what exactly they were talking about. I mean, it makes sense right? But just the presence of such a high military authority so close to the front lines actually show you which country in this conflict actually cares about the well-being of its own soldiers. And speaking about Avdiivka, Russians themselves, they had to make a very tough decision recently, which is to continue its powerful quote-unquote offensive. And even according to the British intelligence report, this is probably the most significant attack against Avdivka in the last nine months, with Russians bringing battalions of their infantry and military vehicles trying to encircle the city. So far, extremely unsuccessful. And already according to Ukrainians fighting in this front line, approximately every 30 minutes, Russians bring at least 10 armored personnel carriers full of infantry, then they turn around and just to drive as fast as possible. Ukrainians still able to eliminate at least one, two of them every single time. And 30 minutes later, 10 more armored personnel carriers bring new infantry. And this continues like this almost 24-7. So, you can only imagine the number of losses that Russians are suffering without achieving any significant success so far. And in one of the biggest, most recent assault attempts of Russians, they were once again completely repelled by Ukrainians. And this time, reportedly, up to 22 armored military vehicles were destroyed, which is in addition to 63 destroyed the day before, bringing the total number of Russian military vehicles lost in only two days to 80 five units. Just think about this number. It is almost one military vehicle of Russians destroyed, less than 30 minutes. And right here, for example, are just a few images of confirmed Russian military vehicles being destroyed, such as, for example, tanks, armored personnel carriers, and infantry combat fighting vehicles. And even Russian military correspondents themselves from this area, they do not show any sign of hope. They are basically claiming that this offensive of Russians against Avdivka has been happening for at least 10 days straight. Thousands of lives are already sacrificed or heavily injured, with absolutely once again no gains at all. The only gains that they have is this grey contested zone, which basically means that Ukrainians had to switch their defense trenches and go a little bit further back. That's pretty much it, which is obviously not justified at all, with the number of losses Russians are suffering every single day. But you already know the mentality of the Russian military commanders. It is, has been unchanged since the Second World War, or maybe even before that. Send as many people as you can, as you want, trying to exhaust the enemy, because despite the number of losses, eventually your enemy will be tired, and they will start retreating. The only question here, how many lives of your own people it will take? Hundred? thousand, ten thousand, or maybe something like Bakhmut, close to fifty plus thousand. Because for them it is way more important to achieve a good standing with President Putin rather than to care about their own infantry.
And by the way, guys, if you want to support my work and also receive early access to fully uncensored The Russian Dude episodes, starting only as little as $4 for the entire month, please go ahead and check my Patreon. There is one week of free access for you to see if you like it or not, and the link is down below. Thank you so much for your support, my Patreons. Please subscribe to my channel and see you tomorrow.